How many of you like good testimonies? I think it was maybe two Sundays ago or three Sundays ago. You might remember we were preaching for a couple of services, a few services in a row on praise uh, and, and worship. We started out with prayer, but then we got on praise and worship. And you might remember we just practiced it a couple times at the end of the service. And one Sunday, I think it was maybe, anybody know Andy? March 19th. We just finished the service with a praise time and the power of God fell. I don't know if you remember that. Um, so uh, that, that uh, and then, uh, and we just got, got full of the Spirit, and some, then the Spirit of God started moving in different ways. Well, uh, and then at the end, I, I was standing up here. We were worshiping God, and I was standing up here, and it came up in my spirit, just, just very simple, very, but it was very clear that because we worship God tonight, there was, there was something in someone's life like an accident that was going to be averted or something because of the power released. That, that, that we, we, you know, through faith, through praising God, entering into the presence of God. You remember that? There was going to be accident, an accident averted or something. Within a week, I believe, two people came to me, and their story, though they didn't know each other had come, their story was almost identical. It's very interesting. Two people. And this was the story. They were driving, uh, and uh, I, think, I think maybe neither of them, I don't think either of them, even knew what had happened. Maybe, that, maybe one of them knew something had happened, but it didn't seem like it was that big of a deal while they were driving. They felt like they hit something or something like that. Um, and both of them, it's very interesting. I don't, I, don't, I don't, you know, you might say, well, can you explain that? Not really, but it doesn't, I don't have to explain it. We got the victory. We got the, we got the testimony, you know. Both of them, uh, when they got to their place where of their destination, one I think was jo- their job and the other one was their home, um, one of their tires was completely shredded and, and no, n- n- no way of holding air except they were holding air. Wow. In fact, one of them got out of their car and they looked and their tire was completely shredded and, and, they, and, and, the, and, the, and it's, 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 it looks like it's inflated. Wow. Except when they got out of their car, it went poof and went down like that. Hallelujah. And just and deflated right there in the parking lot while they were standing there looking at it. Two separate cases, almost identical stories. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I, you know, one of them I think was out here on 30, and then the other one had been running around all day with that. Didn't really realize it. Um, but... Uh, they are part of the day, whatever it was, and they said, uh, you know, uh, you know, I hear on 30 going whatever the speed limit is. I think it's 95. At least that's what I used to do. <laughs> Amen. We believe we receive. Amen. <laughs> but, but, but you know, going that kind of speed, let's just say 65, 70 mile an hour. And going that kind of speed, and your one tire goes out, that, that, could be, that could be an issue. So we thank God. Amen. Amen. I didn't have the chance to tell you that, uh, you know, for a couple of, you know, for a little period of time here, but I wanted to get, tell you that testimony. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many of you want to see those videos when you go to heaven? Yes. Now, Lord, show me how you did that. Did you have an inner tube in there? What would you do that time? <laughs> We don't really care how it happened. We just thank God for the testimony. Praise the Lord. Amen. We ought to give God some praise. Let's lift our hands and thank him for it. Thank you for it. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so good. You're so good. Thank you for protection. Thank you for the angels. Thank you for your power. Thank you for the victory. Thank you for safety. Thank you that we're kept by the power of God. Hallelujah. We dwell in the secret place under that defense of the Almighty. Hallelujah. We praise you for it, Father. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise your Father. Praise your Father. Praise your Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> I can speak for myself. I've had a couple situations through the years, not, not necessarily anything recently, but through the years, uh, to where I, I, I really don't know that I would have lived through it. You know what I mean? Uh, because of the protection of God, though, I was protected. I could tell you a story when I was, in, when I was a young child. I, well, I was, I think, probably 12 or something like that, 12 or 15. Um, but the, how God, I, there's no way I, I could have lived through that. It's kind of an amazing story. But, but I think there's a lot of us that probably sometimes don't even realize what we've been kept from. Some of these things, we have just enough information to realize there was something supernatural that happened right there, you know. So we thank God for his goodness. I remember years ago, probably 15 years ago or more, the Spirit of God came on me and started prophesying. And one of the things he said was that we will be known as the untouchable ones, where the enemy cannot touch us. And, and even, even death and in, 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 uh, protection from death. Praise the Lord. We serve a good God, don't we? We are, we are so kept by our Father. Thank God for his angels. Thank God for his power, his miracles, and preservation. Praise the Lord. All right. Did you bring your Bible tonight? Um, go over with me to uh, Genesis chapter number 4. Let's look at some things that uh, I, I just had this stirring in my spirit uh, tonight. That's, uh, I've, been, I've been meditating on this for a while, actually. But Genesis chapter number 4, we're going to look at verses 6 and 7. I'm going to just read it in the Amplified. And uh, basically, I don't know how far we'll get with this tonight, but uh, I want to get something started. We'll see how, how we go on this. Uh, Genesis chapter number 4, amen. There's a preacher over there. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Genesis chapter number four. Let's read verses uh, six and seven. Praise God. Say that out loud. I am kept. Genesis four, six and seven. The Lord said to Cain. Now this is the context of this. Whenever God had accepted Abel's, off Abel's offering and not Cain's, and uh, Cain was quite, you know, distraught about it. And notice how God described it. He said to Cain, this is the Amplified Classic, by the way. We, uh, he said to Cain, why are you angry? And what, uh, why do you look sad and depressed and dejected? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin crouches at your door. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. Amen. This desire is for you, but you must master it. I'm gonna, I, wanna, I just want to talk to you tonight about mastering Amen. things. There's things in all of our lives, you know, basically, it's probably different for each one of us, but uh, that, that could trip us up. You know, uh, that's what he's referring to here, something that's going to trip you up, that's going to take you out, Cain, you know. And so... Um, We've all got things in our lives that if, uh, you know, whether it's just something simply like a, a bend to our personality or it's a, uh, a weakness in the flesh, we tend to yield to certain things. You know what it is for you. I know what it is for me. We'll just keep looking straight ahead. Right? And uh, something that tries to trip us up. Something that the devil, to be honest with you, seems to, uh, you know, try to push into our lives. I mean, if we're not careful, it'll just try, try to show back up again. Yeah. Anybody want to say amen or oh me? I don't know what you want to say, but <laughs> so we're, thank God we're not helpless on this. But we, we do have to realize we are still human. We're still in the flesh. Yes. As much as we're in, learning to walk in the Spirit, there's still things that, you know, if we're not too far in the Spirit, we'll just, we'll just yield to it. Yeah. Yeah. I said we. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We clean up nice in church, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Now, we're not believing to do that, but we've proven we will. Praise the Lord. 
And so, um, you know, here's, here's a, for Cain, you can see what this was. Abel's offering was accepted. And the Bible says over there in 1 John chapter number 3, it says that his, Cain's uh, uh, deeds were righteous. And Abel's, I mean, Abel's deeds were righteous and Cain's deeds were not righteous. And then you find in Hebrews 11 that by faith, uh, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. So Abel's offering it the way God, the right way, the way God said, and he's doing it in faith. And if you look back there in Genesis, a few verses before this verse, you'll see that the difference was, the Amplified brings it out real clear, that Abel brought the first yes. of the flock. Yes. Yes. Right. In other words, he's bringing the tithe. Yep. Yes. It says about Cain, he brought in the process of time. If you look up that words or the words translated process of time, it means end of days, last gatherings, last pickings. So his was an offering. I mean, his wasn't first. I mean, it was leftovers, whatever's left over. How many of you know that's not honor for God? And the Bible said God didn't accept it. Isn't that an interesting thought? Amen. That's what an offering is, by the way. It's an offer. It doesn't make it accepted. Well, I've never seen a church yet that hasn't accepted it. We're not talking about the church accepting it. We're talking about God accepting it. God being pleased. And how many of you can see here, it was a heart issue. It was a faith issue. And it was an honor issue. Amen. And so whenever God didn't accept it, Cain, now, now we, doesn't have, we don't have record of what it meant that he didn't accept it. Maybe fire didn't fall on it or something. We don't, we don't have the record of that. But right on the other hand, uh, Cain got uh, angry about it. He's miffed. He's mad at God. This isn't right. You know, my brother over here, my younger brother over here is uh, being accepted and I'm not. And by the way, it said here, notice Cain, look at verse number uh, well, it's not in these verses. I have it. It's, it's previous verses in the Amplified. Uh, to Abel and to his offering, he had respect. And to Cain and his offering, he had not respect. Right. Yeah. Now, notice God identified the man with his offering. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 That's good. To Cain and his offering, he had not respect. To Abel and his offering. He put the man with his offering. In other words, you are what you give. Yeah. To God. I'm talking about giving to God. Yes. Amen. Yes. If you're stingy, you're stingy with God. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. I mean, don't, don't get mad because I'm talking about money. I'm, that's not my subject tonight, but I'm just I'm looking at the context of this. And so whenever he wasn't accepted because it wasn't coming out of a heart of honor and love for God and appreciation, and, and, and see, honor will put God first. Yeah. It won't wait till everything's paid, all the bills are paid, and give God something off the leftovers. That's not accepted with God. God's to be honored more than that. He's done you better than that. He's not giving you the leftovers. He's giving you his best. And he's worthy of our best. And he's worthy of our first before anything else. Well, and that's not what I'm preaching on tonight. But I want you to see that Cain got mad on that. He got angry on that. And uh, God said, uh, yeah, you know, because he really, it was probably a twofold anger. It's probably towards God, but probably also towards God accepting Cain or accepting Abel and not him. And so uh, Cain's uh, offering wasn't accepted. Abel's was. And the fact that God was blessing Abel brought conviction to Cain. And conviction makes people do strange things. Yeah. That's true. Amen. And so it showed really that Abel's offering being accepted showed Cain was wrong and it showed him that he wanted to hold to his darkness. He's walking in the dark. He's not walking in the light. And it got brought conviction and God warned him. He said, uh, you better get a hold of yourself. You better get a hold of yourself. You know what I'm talking about? He warned him of the consequences of if he don't get a hold of himself, if he don't get a hold of that anger, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. that jealousy, yes, come on. That, that notice it said there he was dejected, he was depressed, yeah. he looks sad, he's mad. Oh you ever seen somebody like that? Yes. That's dangerous territory. That's, that's an easy place to sin right there, either with your mouth or with your actions. Yeah. And so, uh, but so he said, you got to get a hold of yourself. Or uh, you're going to, you're going to, you know, there's going to be some things happen that 
It's going to bring some consequences into your life. And so uh, it was Cain's responsibility to master that. You notice that? That's, that's what I keep being drawn back to. I've been drawn to this for a couple of weeks, but you must master it. You must master it. There's things in all of our life that we've got to master. Don't pray, God, take this away. Take this away. Take this old fleshly appetite away. No, you master it. He's not going to take it away. Until you're, you have a new body and I have a new body, there's going to be things that our flesh gets whatever irritated at, offended at. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, or, or, you know, fleshly lust or something that we're going to have to master. God won't take it away until we get a new body. Amen. Tell your neighbor that's, that's, the, that's our responsibility. Amen. Praise the Lord. So what does it mean to master something? It means that uh, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you don't master something, it means that you don't pay attention to what God's addressing in your life. When God brings up, now you need to stop doing that. Not in condemnation, but in correction. In, in instruction, in, uh, in conviction. Yes. God will deal with, deal with you in conviction. And he'll deal with you. Uh, your, your heart will smite you sometimes. The Holy Ghost in you will convict you and your own heart will smite you. Yeah. Yeah. And so to not master something means you just, you know, blah, 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 blah. About something God's dealing with you about, just ignoring it. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Yeah. And uh, the New Testament calls it judging ourselves. Yeah. Oh, well, no, we're not supposed to judge. Well, you better judge yourself. The Bible says if you don't judge yourself, you'll be judged. Oh, no, no, we're new, new, new creation in Christ. Yeah, and that's in the New Testament. That doesn't mean you'll lose your salvation. That's not what judge means, if you read the whole context of the New Testament on it. But it just simply means there's going to be some things you won't get into, and there's going to be some things you open the door to the devil to. And the devil will keep you from getting into God's best. Really, you allowed him to keep you from getting into God's best. Amen. So uh, we, we all just, uh, you know, every one of us knows what it is in our own life. I don't have to tell you what it is in my life. You don't have to tell me what it is in your life. We're going to all keep our nose in our own business tonight. Praise God. But it's true about every one of us as believers, uh, whether we're called to the ministry or not, Whenever we don't put our foot to certain things, those things will start dominating us. Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse number 12. 1 Corinthians 6, 12. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I'll not be brought under the power of any. And then he goes on, he said, meat for the belly and the belly for meat and so forth and so on. He's talking about there, there's nothing wrong with eating food. There's nothing wrong with, with certain things. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, like, for example, our physical body has an appetite for food. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. right? Yeah. And, and that's nothing wrong with that appetite. It has an appetite for sex. Yeah. Right. We haven't used that word in church for a while. Maybe we ought to camp on that one for a while. <laughs> <laughs> that's a natural appetite. Right? And so there's nothing wrong with it per se, but it has to be moderated, whether it's appetite for food or appetite for sex or whatever, you know. It has to be moderated in line with the Word of God. And you can see, notice how he said, I'll not be brought under the power of any. What does it mean to master something? That means it doesn't dominate you, you dominate it. So whenever it says master something up there in Genesis, we could say that means don't let anything bring you under its power. In other words, you're, you keep it under your control. It doesn't control you. I don't know how many amens we're going to get tonight, but anyway, it's going to be. This has just been on my heart. Then we've got 1 Corinthians 9, 26 and 27. Paul said, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beats the air. You know, people are uh, fighting and, you know, you know, trying to win victories and so forth. But he said, I don't, I don't fight like one that beats the air. But he said, I, I, I have a focus for my punches. Right. He said, this is where I'm focused. I keep my body under. I keep my body under. And I bring it into subjection. Notice it won't volunteer. No. No, it'll say, please pass that third piece of pie. No, I mean, it won't volunteer to say no. Yeah. Right, right. It's, it's right. 
<laughs> now we're talking about pie, but you realize there's a lot of appetites of the flesh. We just use that because we all understand that one. So, but uh, he said here, I keep my body under. Now, that's a little strange language, but he's, if you read it in other translations, uh, under, my, uh, uh, under my authority, I keep control of it, my body. I don't let my body just do anything it wants. And listen, just because we're saved doesn't mean our body just, just wants to do everything right now. Our body still has the nature of the flesh, the, the nature of sin. So he said, I keep my body under, I bring it into subjection. Notice I do that. So he's not a body. He's somebody else. He's a spirit man. He, the new creation is how you rule over the body. You don't rule over the body with willpower. Now you must mix your will with it. You have to set your will in line with your spirit, what your spirit says to do. But right on the other hand, you, you, we've all proven that, you know, we have through the years maybe, well, you know, January 1st, I'm going to set a New Year's resolution. I'm not going to eat any sugar. And we, we're not going we're, we're to eat any sugar for the whole year and the last two weeks. <laughs> willpower. No, no, things are, we don't do things by willpower. I keep under my body. Not willpower. I do. The man on the inside. So then he said there, I bring it into subjection. Keep on reading and notice what he said. Lest by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. That means if you look it up, some translations say, I think maybe the Amplified, but it says set aside as unusable. He's not talking about salvation here. Or losing his salvation. He's talking about the, he, he's going to be unusable to God in the ministry that he was called to. Set aside as unusable. So, can you see, see that's saying some, of the same, saying some of the same things as God said to Cain in Genesis chapter number 4. You must master it. This fleshly appetite to, get off, to fly off the handle, get mad. You've got to master that. Can you see that? Saying some of the same things. And so to master something, like I says, to, to not let it rule you. Yes. You rule it. Yes. Yes. Amen. I'm not going to come under the power of anything except the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I yield to the Holy Ghost, yes. but not these other things. Yes. Because if I'm brought under the power of something, it's controlling me rather than me controlling it. Right. Yep. Well, why will the Lord talk to us about things? I don't know about you, but he's always talking to me about something. He's always talking. If he doesn't talk to you, uh, either you're not listening or you've already perfected. And I know which one it is. <laughs> In the flesh, you're not perfected yet. Now, you might have a perfect heart, but you understand what I'm talking about. I was awfully quiet in here tonight, but anyway, I'll just keep on preaching. So, no, he said, uh, you, you know, God will talk to you about these things. Now, why will he keep talking to us about these things? Because it says in Hebrews 12, verse number 6, whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Yes. Why is this something that God deals with us with these things about? Because it's a flow of his love. Yes. What does that mean? It keeps us off the t Love, love, love will keep us, if we'll listen. Now, we, he won't make us do anything. But love, if we'll listen to him, will keep us, he'll deal with us and keep us off the territory where the devil has access to us. Oh, that's love. That's love. I said, that's love. Because whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Not only that, he's bringing us into the fullness of the stature of Christ. Remember Ephesians talks about it? Bringing us into the fullness of the stature of Christ. This is growing up preaching tonight. And so uh, when we come into the fullness of the stature of Christ, um, we start going through a process. This is not an overnight thing. Renewing the mind's not an overnight thing. Crucifying the flesh isn't an overnight thing. Walking in the spirit isn't an overnight thing. Amen. It's a process. Don't get, don't get, uh, don't get, don't get to beating up yourself in the process. Well, you know, I should be further along. Well, welcome to the human race. You know, you don't get anywhere with condemnation. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so you got to stay in faith, stay out of condemnation, stay in faith, and uh, forgive yourself. How I many of you know you can ask the Lord to forgive you, and he'll do it yes. right away. But, but you got to forgive yourself. Yes. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. Oh, dear Jesus. I'm not going to testify. <laughs> but uh, to say that something is ruling you, when 
uh, when, when, uh, whenever we're yielding to something, we might say, well, I can control that. But the more we yield to it, the more it's controlling us. Now, Dr. Summerall made this statement. I want you to write this down. We're all young whippersnappers in here tonight, so this applies to us. That's right. That's right. Amen. Three amens and 14 grunts. <clears throat> but Dr. Summerall said this, uh, and I like it. It just, it just speaks volumes to me, actually. What you don't master when you're young will rule you when you're old. Woo. Ouch. What you don't master when you're young will rule you when you're old. So what's that mean, rule you when you're old? That means it will affect your finish. Because when you're old is when you're supposed to be finishing. When you're old, you're supposed to be still in the race. Amen. When you're old, you're to be in the latter stages of the plan of God for your life. Not, Not still trying to get into the first phase. Now, you might say, I'm not in the ministry. I don't go through phases. You as a believer go through phases. Just like just growing up spiritually, just like a natural bu- person goes through phases. I mean, the, 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 the childhood stage is different than the teenager stage. And the, and the young adult stage is different. You know, usually marriage, that's a whole new phase and things like that, children and so forth. But then there's an older, there's a, a you know, a mature uh, senior citizen phase. Or maybe you're, uh, you're not as active in the workforce or, you know. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a different phase of life. And, and the same thing's true spiritually, whether you're in the ministry or not. There's phases. And just because you get older, you know, just because the clock went tick, tick a few more times or the calendar turned the page a few more times and you're getting older physically doesn't mean you're do, making any progress spiritually. That's not equal. Getting older physically or, or you know, in the body doesn't mean you're getting any pro- making any progress on the plan of God for your life. That's a spiritual thing, not a natural thing. Now, people think they're more mature because maybe they have a little bit of more street smarts. They've been around a little bit longer, but that doesn't make you mature spiritually. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I think we ought to preach some more on crucifying the flesh. So, um, but like I said there, when something, you know, rules you, when you're old, that means your finish won't be the, right, the same as it should have been. Yeah. Amen. In other words, that thing ruling us will keep us from the, the finish God intended us to have. That thing will keep us uh, from get, coming into the fullness of the best of God's plan for our lives. You understand? Not every phase of the plan of God that we, God has for us will we succeed in if something's ruling us. So we have to address some things. And so... Um, The Lord's always dealing with us about something. Amen. He might be dealing with you about how much time you spend on social media, which is a lazy mind. Amen. He might be dealing with you about, uh, you know, anger. He might be dealing with you about offense. He might be dealing with you about giving your opinion about everything. He might be dealing with you about talking about people. Don't get quiet on me. That's a bad time to get quiet. So uh, why, does, why is God always dealing with us? Because it's the flow of his love. Now, why is he dealing with us? Because he can't fix it. That's why he's talking to us. We're the ones that have the authority to do something about it. Woo! And uh, so he, he, would, he would deal with it if he could, but he can't. He, it, it's us. It's our flesh. That's the realm of our responsibility to deal with that. How about the habit of taking uh, wrong thoughts? Huh? He can't fix that. We have to fix that. And he'll deal with us about it. I feel like it just seems like to me, I told this to Pastor Nancy, I don't know, maybe a year ago. I said, uh, Pastor, I said, I, I said, I've grown all these years spiritually and, you know, I know I've not arrived, but I'm just, I'm just, I've just learned so much and I've, I'm so much better off than I used to be spiritually. I'm much more victorious in my thought life and the flesh and so forth. But I said, it seems like lately, it just seems like lately, it's almost like I haven't hardly learned anything. It's almost like I've got to learn it all over again. As I said, I don't know exactly what I, that all is. She says, well, it's just the same thing on a different level. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And she said, don't feel bad about it. She said, all of us are dealing with it That's right good. now. That's yeah. 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 Amen. You go through phases. Yeah. You can know something but not know it like you're going to know it later on. 
You can be walking in something, but, but look back five years from now and, and look back on yourself now and go, oh, my goodness, dear Jesus, he was so merciful with me. We, but, but we thought we were a humdinger. We did. We thought we were. And, you know, we, we were doing what we knew. But we weren't a humdinger at all. We were just a dinger. <laughs> Amen. So praise the Lord. So he can't fix it. And so, uh, but somebody said, well, God doesn't, doesn't, doesn't seem to be dealing with me about much. Well, number one, he is. Number two, it's, it could be, listen to me very carefully. It could be that you've ignored him so long, he just stopped talking to you about it. He said, okay, I'll just leave them to their own devices and, uh, and uh, won't talk to them about it anymore. Tell your neighbor, that'll, 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 that'll hurt if you just listen to it. Amen. Amen. So uh, he just won't bring it up anymore sometimes. You really don't want to get to that place because that's a place where you're, you're now missing something, but you don't know what it is. You, you don't want to get to the place God just stops dealing with you about it. You know what I'm talking about? Without response. You know, he won't do that if your heart's right and you truly are, are, are uh, walking in the light that you have. But you understand, uh, you can see that in the Bible, like King Saul in the Old Testament. God, uh, Samuel's praying for King Saul. And God said to Saul, Samuel, he said, stop, don't even talk to him about him anymore. He's made his decisions. Wow. Well, praise the Lord. Hasn't been this quiet in church for a long time. <laughs> Amen. So sometimes when God is dealing with us about something, it can seem like it's not very important. Well, I mean, look at them. They're, they don't seem to be convicted about that. Or just, just saying, well, you know, just using slang words or something. You ever had God deal with you about the slang words you're using? <laughs> well, well, I don't know why I got convicted on that. I mean, so-and-so. They, don't, they, 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 they say things like that. How I many of you know you're not going to stand before so-and-so and give an account to, to them, nor are you going to stand before God and give an account for so-and-so? You're going to stand before God and give an account to God for yourself. Amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. And so uh, if God uh, is dealing with you about something, it might seem small, but as soon as he starts dealing with you about it, it's not small anymore. He just made a big deal out of it. And if it's a big deal to him, it ought to be a big deal to us. Amen. And so uh, to treat it like, oh, it's not that big of a deal, no big problem to overlook it, um, that could be dangerous. And I'll tell you why. One of the reasons it could be dangerous is, like right now, it might not seem like a big deal, but left undealt with, it will become a bigger deal and it could actually keep, get you off your course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the course God has for your life. Amen. Paul said, I keep my body under lest I get to the place I'm completely disqualified. That's what some, some translators say, disqualified yeah. 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 For, for service, not salvation, but for service. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Uh, people say, well, I got the call to ministry. That doesn't guarantee success. That's right. That's right. The call doesn't guarantee success at all. What guarantees success is if you respond right. Yeah. Yeah. Prepare yourself. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So tell your neighbor it's a big deal. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, down the road without being that, God's so good. He'll, he'll work with us and work with us and work with us. Anybody had it? God just work with you and work with you? Yeah. Just work with you and work with you? Because your heart's right, he'll keep working with you. Yeah. So, but, uh, you know, and God will address things. Because he's trying to get us into the position to where, because he knows without that being addressed now, where we are now, without that being addressed now, later on, if that's not dealt with, the, the enemy will exploit that issue as a way to get access to us and take us out. That's absolutely the truth. And take advantage of us, rob us of the plan of God and so forth and so on. So when he's dealing with you about something, don't make it a little issue. It's a big issue. Amen. 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 No man's going to walk into the fullness of God's plan uh, and just bypass this process. 
well, I don't seem like, it doesn't seem like God's dealing with anybody else like, like he's dealing with me. Well, don't, don't judge, number one, by what you see. He might be dealing with other people just as much as you. But, but number two, uh, maybe the plan of God doesn't require them to cut that out that he's dealing with you about, but it requires it of you. Amen. Amen. Uh, so d- just don't tr- compare. The Bible says to compare yourselves with others is not wise. It's not wise at all. And so, um, you know, th- these things are very, very important. Now, the things that trouble us today or try to get into our lives today won't go away just because you got older. I've known of 60 and 70 year old men that are still perverts. Pastor's getting bold tonight. Yeah, I know. Just, just time to get bold. Why? They didn't deal with that in their younger years. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yep. That's good. That's exactly. So it won't go away because you got older. Let me say this, young guys. Well, I just need to get married because the appetites of the flesh, the appetites of the flesh. Well, getting married, it, it's, it can help that, but it's not going to make it go away. The flesh is still the flesh. Amen. That's exactly the right. Your flesh is still, after you're married, your flesh is still let you do or, or, or try to get you to do anything it'll do before you got married. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> So you got to put your foot to it. You got to master it. Lord, take this away. He's not going to take it away. You master it. You master it. You make the devil, you show the devil that don't work on me anymore. That doesn't work on me anymore. Show that to him. Now, what do you mean show that to him? Well, it's in Philippians 128 in the Amplified. If you want to just write something down to get. The Bible talks about the, that uh, the, your, your fearlessness in the presence of the fear is a clear sign to the enemy that he's defeated. Get, send the devil a different sign. Send the, differ, the devil a different signal in the spirit realm that, that, that says something like this. Ha, ha, ha. Doesn't work anymore. Doesn't work anymore. Doesn't work anymore. That's right. Rather than the devil knows. How many of you know if we keep flunking a test in an area where, where we keep flunking a test, the devil knows that's my go-to thing right there. I, I get the, I'll, 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 I'll get them onto that. I'll tempt them with that, and that'll work on them every single time. So he'll keep going back to that. It's like, I mean, it's no real mystery when you think about it. I mean, you take two basketball teams or football teams or something like that. They'll watch, they'll watch games of that opposing team all week or something like that, and they'll, they'll, they'll find the weaknesses. Okay, we got to double team that guy, or we've got to do this, we've got to do that. They're looking for weaknesses. Why are they looking for weaknesses? So that they can exploit that weakness and dominate them on the court and win the game. Well, the devil's the same way. He's looking for weaknesses. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, you, you would too if you was a good devil. If you, was, if you was the devil and you were the good devil, you'd look for weaknesses. Amen. Just, just say a little something about this or that and they'll get offended and that just shut down their faith, shut down everything like that. And so he just keeps pushing that button and he sends people along to push that button. I don't know why all these people offend me because the, it keeps working, that's why. It just keeps working, it just keeps working. Show the devil a different sign. So I'm not, go, I'm not falling for that anymore. Amen. I'm telling you what, this will set you free. Now, think about Judas. Judas thought wrong about money. He, he, uh, his wrong thinking uh, gave, turned him into a greedy man. He's stealing out of the treasury, Jesus' treasury. Jesus made him the treasurer. And so uh, it turned him into a thief. And then when he got around the anointing, that wrong thinking, without dealing with that wrong thinking, around the anointing, uh, it caused him to actually betray Jesus for, that, for, for 30 pieces of silver. What he didn't deal with in, in those early years took him out. Somebody said one time, because you remember in the Old Testament, uh, God told uh, King Saul to kill all the Amalekites in that first battle, and he didn't do it. You remember? Remember that story? Samuel said, what's the sound that I hear bleeding of the sheep and all that? And they brought all the people back. He didn't kill all the Amalekites. Later on in a battle, whenever the anointing lifted off of Saul, God started saying, I'm going to use King David. 
uh, because Saul turned, you know, obstinate and and really it's turned very uh, hard-headed and wouldn't listen, self-willed, really. And uh, God rejected him. The Bible says that if you read the whole story, it looks like in one passage it's not true, but you read the whole story in both accounts, it was an Amalekite that killed him. So it's your Amalekite that's going to get you. What you won't do, what you, what you won't address, that's what's going to take you out. What Judas didn't address, the greed Judas didn't address, that's what took him out. Amen. Well, and this is when people, people get into places in life, they're like, God, I don't know what's taking so long. I'll tell you what's taking so long, his mercy. To not move you into things that... Into in favor, blessings, voices into the body of Christ, yes. prosperity, and things like that that you're not ready to handle. Right. Yes. Right. That's right. You know, some things, if people got into it quick, too quick, they, it, they would destroy them. Yeah. Yes, yep. sir. Yep. Yep. Our kind of prosperity, for example, talk about prosperity. Our kind of prosperity is that we prosper according to our soul prospering. Yes. That's the renewing of the mind. But it's not limited to the soul, according to our spiritual development, according to our development of our walk with God. That'll keep you safe in everything, all the blessings that God brings to your life. Why is it so quiet in here? That's our kind of prosperity. And that's the most sure kind of prosperity. That's the kind that can't be shaken regardless of what's going on in the economy. Because it's not built on the economy. It's built on your fellowship with God, your relationship with God, and your walk with Him in faith. Ha, 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 ha. That signed me up for that kind. And so uh, Judas not dealing with that, it caused him to have a very different finish. That not dealing with that, that his downfall did not happen whenever he betrayed Jesus. His downfall was way back there when he wouldn't address the greed. He wouldn't renew his mind about money. Samson's the same way. Yeah, if you ever read the story of Samson, his weakness was that he couldn't keep his eyes off the women. Couldn't stay out of bed with harlots and prostitutes. You look at the wives he had and the girlfriends he had, all of them are foreigners, carnal women. Amen? He couldn't keep his eyes off the women. And it affected his ending. He lost what God intended for him to have in his ending. So he said, what did he lose? Well, he lost the judgeship in Israel. He, remember, he's in the book of Judges. He's one of the judges. He lost the judgeship, but he also lost something else. <clears throat> what did the enemy pluck out? They plucked out his eyes, right? Are you, saying, are you still there? The thing that he wouldn't deal with by the enemy was dealt with very harshly. He wouldn't deal with his eyes. And they opened the door for the devil to take his eyes out. Amen. Amen. Boy, this is a different kind of preaching tonight. This is grow up kind of preaching. Amen. I've just been aware lately we haven't done too much of this kind. You know, talking about the flesh, crucifying the flesh. But uh, this is not dealing with some of these things is why people get into prayer and they say, well, Lord, what's taking so long? Well, it's not necessarily God. You know, I was waiting on God. So praise the Lord. So I said, yeah, but the, you know, the anointing was restored to Samson at the end. Yeah, but what, what could he have had? What was lost in all of that? So much. So I don't, I don't think we'll know until we get to heaven. Samson probably didn't know it until he got to heaven. Amen. And so um, Eli is another one in the Old Testament. Eli is the high priest of Israel. And uh, he got real dull spiritually. I don't know if you've ever read the story of Eli. He got real dull spiritually. And his deal was he wouldn't confront his children. He wouldn't correct his children. I don't know if you remember the story. His sons were priests. He's, he's the high priest, but his sons were priests. Eli's sons were priests. And they, they started uh, uh, really, to be honest with you, they started abusing the uh, offerings of God. Amen. And uh, he wouldn't confront his sons about it. They, they weren't living right. They were violating the people of God and violating the offerings of God. And they were his sons, and they were under him 
in the uh, priesthood, and he had authority on two levels to deal with them, as, as their father and as the high priest over the priests. Amen. Amen. But um, they, he wouldn't deal with them. And if you read the whole story, whenever he was carrying the ark, I mean, excuse me, his sons were carrying the ark of the covenant out to the battle was whenever they, the Israel lost the ark of the covenant. The ark of the covenant is the manifest presence of God. They lost it to the Philistines. Whenever his two priests, his two sons, priests, Hopni and Phinehas or whatever however you say that, they, they were the ones that uh, were carrying it when the Philistines captured it. Anybody still glad you came tonight? But so what was, what, what was lost in later years because he wouldn't address his sons? He was permissive towards their error. Amen. Because of that, the end of his entire family history was totally changed. He was supposed to have a lineage of priesthood after him, but the word of the Lord came and said that his lineage is cut off. And by the, by the end of the story, the, the two sons were killed out there in that battle. And then whenever he got the report, he fell over backwards and broke his neck. That's the end of that priesthood lineage. That wasn't the plan of God. God had called them, put them in that place, wanted to use them. But their end was different because they wouldn't master, especially, uh, especially Eli. He would not master. The, the, now, now, here's one that uh, maybe it's not necessarily so much an appetite of the flesh. I'm talking about for Eli. Now, the sons it was. But for, the, for, the, for Eli, maybe it wasn't so much an appetite of the flesh. Maybe it was just, well, that's not my personality to confront. Well, when you're called to the ministry, you don't minister out of your personality. You minister out of the will of God. Amen. And a lack of confrontation. Now, you, a lot of times parents think, well, I'm not a confronter. Um, you know, you, let me rephrase that. You're not a parent. If you're going to be a parent, you have to deal with your children. Now, it's not all about just, you know, spanking them. You understand there's more to it than that. But, but this is a side sometimes in our society, people are, especially in, in the culture we're in, uh, parents, are, parents are totally strange in their thinking about what it means to raise children. They're letting them do all kinds of things. When they need a spanking. Amen. I saw somebody the other day, they had a sign of a, actually it was a, a paddle, you know, on, uh, on the wall. And, uh, uh, you know, it had, a, it had writing on the paddle. Somebody had this in their house, the paddle. You know what a paddle is, don't you? My, I grew up, the paddle in my bottom had fellowship a lot. <laughs> I turned out all right, by the way. Thank you for that vote of confidence. But anyway, I saw this picture, and the paddle on the wall had, a, had writing on it, and they said, making America's children great again. <laughs> I like that. It's time for some parents to stand up and be parents. Hallelujah. Lack of confrontation is an open door for loss. Loss in your children. Loss of spiritual things in your heritage. You know, this is important. God told Abraham, I'm, or God, God, God said about Abraham, he said, I'm going to share these things and make this covenant with Abraham because he'll, he'll, actually, this is what God said. If you read it over there in Genesis, I'd have to look it up, but I, I, I've read it many times. He said, because he'll train his children after him. Yeah. So there are things God won't share with you because he's not a bad steward. If you're a bad steward of how you raise your children, there's things you'll never get into in Revelation because God said, I'm not a bad steward of the things I share. And if I share it with them, it'll end with that generation. It won't be passed to the next generation. So I'm going to find somebody else who will pass it to their children. And it won't be lost on the next generation. Praise the Lord. It's time to quit already, but I'm telling you why. This is just fun up here tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You can lose a lot of things because of not being uh, of the right parent. Many don't become, confront because they say, it's not my nature. It's not my personality. It's not my makeup. Well, parents, 
you, you, you got to overstep some things, over, overstep your natural tendencies. <clears throat> I remember walking down, I remember talking to Pastor Debbie when we first got here to pastor. I said to her, I said, it's just dawning on me real quick here, real quick. You know, I said, it's dawning on me real quick. There's some strong-willed people in this church. And if I don't overstep my personality to not be confronting, they're going to be running this church within about a year. So I had to step up, step over my personality. Sometimes I'd almost go home and cry. The Lord would say, stop that. He said, it's, it's safe for the church. Yeah. You got to say, you got to protect the church. Yes. Yeah. And like Pastor Nancy said, I'm not going to have a church that I don't like pastoring. I got to stay here. Yeah. They, they can do whatever they want, but I got to stay here. Praise the Lord. Shucking the corn tonight. I said that in California one time and they just looked at me like, what's that? I said, you got you to live in Iowa. <laughs> <clears throat> Amen. Amen. To tolerate wrong is not keeping the congregation safe. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. Your personality might color your pastoring, but it's not supposed to control whether you obey the word of God or not. Amen. And so parents, um, you know, you be the parent. Can we just close on that? You be the parent. That just simply means you, 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 <clears throat> you realize somebody said, well, God, do something with my children. He did. He gave them a parent. He gave them a parent. And your response, your, your, your attitude before God ought to be, God, I'm not waiting on you to deal with it. If you want to, now, I'm not talking about younger children. I'm talking about teenage years, later on teenage years. You know, maybe they even left the house. But praying for them, uh, you know, go, oh, God, do something. Uh, Especially, well, I should say, when they're still in your house, really. He did. He gave them a parent. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's Amen. Right. And your attitude ought not be, God, you do something. Your attitude ought to be, I'm on my way to do something. If you want to, if you want to do it yourself, you better stop me. Yeah. Right. Yes. That ought to be your attitude as a parent. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So um, Eli didn't deal with these, these sons because he wouldn't do that. It actually caused his whole family to die prematurely. It caused the lineage that God had, the, the priesthood lineage that was supposed to follow through him, it caused that to be cut off. And it affected the whole nation. Because now the manifest presence of God is gone. The, te- the, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the Ark of the Covenant is gone. And now the whole nation is beginning to lose. Lose battles. Can you see how important it is that we, that we step over natural tendencies? And master it. Yes. Well, I'm just shy. No, no. You don't know who you are in Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. That went over real good. But <clears throat> operating out of your weakness will cause great loss. Amen. Praise the Lord. Your personality. I know the Lord's changed my personality. Totally changed my personality. Because I've got my mind renewed. And he restored my soul. Praise God. And so, um, are you glad you came tonight? Be sober about how much room you allow yourself in things of the flesh, you know, where where God's dealing with you about it. Be sober about that because the Bible said, be sober, be vigilant. The adversary is walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Watch over yourself. A big part of watching, you know, people say, I'm going to watch in the spirit. A big part of it is just watching over your own fleshly appetites. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's all stand to our feet. I think maybe that's about as much as the seat and the conscience can endure tonight. (laughs) Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. These things can be a way of thinking. You know, like like he might be dealing with you. I've had him deal with, in fact, I had him deal with me about this just just recently. uh, You know, you can start feeling sorry for yourself. I know nobody here's done that. Start feeling sorry for yourself. And and I just just recently the Lord just I, he didn't say it in this way, but this is the way I, I this is the way I would interpret it. Buck it up. Nobody said this life's going to be fair. This world's going to be fair. I'll take care of you. Buck it up. 
That's the way it kind of came to me. I'm like, yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Woo, glory be to God. I'm strong. <laughs> I'm not going to, you know, tell your neighbor that's somebody else, not you. You, didn't, you wouldn't do that. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so uh, deal with the, the wrong ways of thinking. Deal with pity parties. Deal with the way you talk to people. When he deals with you, I don't want you talking to your wife like that. Amen. The, the deal with the way you, you uh, handle finances whenever he's saying, don't, don't spend so much money. I'm not saying don't spend money. I'm saying if he's, he's convicting you about it. So uh, deal with the way you uh, handle your body or you allow your body to, to dominate you. Deal with the way you handle your children. Now here's one. Deal with wasted time. Social media is a big one when it comes to wasted time. Now, let me, can I explain something? Can I explain something? A lot of times Wednesday nights you stand around and talk a while, just take those minutes tonight. <laughs> um, when, when there's opposition coming against your mind whenever Satan's yakety yak yak, the Bible way to deal with that is not to get distracted with something else. It's to turn your attention to the Word. There's a pseudo peace that people, that it doesn't really give them, give them victory because it doesn't tap into the power of God. But people get into this pseudo peace because they distract themselves like watching four hours of YouTube or, or, or watching movies for half the afternoon because I just don't want to think about what the devil's saying. That's not victory. Does that make any sense? That's not being a doer of the word. Being a doer of the word means turning away from all that will distract unto Jesus, unto the word, not unto something that's just making your mind numb. Can't keep your eyes open anymore. Got one eye one for a while, and then you got to go to the other one for a while. <laughs> I'm just numbing out because I can't handle the, 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 the devil's. You're not walking in victory. Put your foot to that. That's really carnal. Well, this is good pastoral preaching tonight. The evangelist is not going to tell you this. But it is where victory is. Hallelujah. No, don't. It, looking away. You're, you're authorized to ignore some things, but not, not by, by looking to something carnal, by, by looking away from what the devil's saying to what God says. Remember the Bible talks about Jesus talking, he was, you know, the woman with the issue of blood is talking to him about her testimony. And then they came to Jairus from Jairus' house and said, that, you know, don't trouble the master, your daughter's dead. Yeah. And Jesus, hear, the Amplified says, hearing but igno or overhearing and ignoring. Yeah. You're authorized to ignore some things. Yeah. So I'm not saying don't ignore some things. I'm saying don't do it by getting all carnal, just focusing on something carnal. Right. Right. Something that numbs your mind yeah. to where you forget yeah. about it. It's not real, true victory. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, hallelujah. 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 I heard an amen coming out of that flower, so I guess it was good. <laughs> Lift your hands. Father, thank you for the victory in our lives. Thank you for real, true victory. True, real victory over the flesh, over attitudes, over, over uh, bombarding thoughts over even our natural makeup along certain lines. Father, thank you for the, for the word of God. Father, as you lead us, we'll see how you lead us in taking this further like you've, you've shared so many of these things with me. Father, as we, uh, as we follow, you know, get into this more and as you lead us and guide us, we thank you for helping us. We thank you for answers. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for victory, real, true victory, victory over a life of worry, victory over fear, victory over drawing back from being obedient in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you, Father God. We're going from glory to glory, and we thank you for progression, progression into the best you have for us as we master the things of the flesh in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody still loves pastors. Say amen. 
this is just scrub. You, 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 we're scrubbing where, the, the, where we don't always get the dirt out. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I like going to church and getting that scrub brush out, don't you? I was like, okay, here we go. Ouch, 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 ouch. Oh, but boy, that feels so clean now. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.